Hi guys, this is Brandy. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we are going to look at some stuff I got from Hobby Lobby. And uh, before I get started, just want to do a shout out to my boss. Hi, hope you enjoy this video. Um, I have done this a while back and I've been planning on doing this video and just hadn't got a chance to do it yet. So I just wanted to show you some of the things I had gotten. Um, we're going to use some of them today in our video. But I've been eyeballing this uh, angel, my brain isn't working, stamp for a while. I really like her face. But anyhow, it was on sale for $2.74, so I had to get it. We won't be using it today, but, um, you know, I really don't need any more rubber stamps, but I really liked it. And here along the lines again, another rubber stamp, but this one is, uh, of course, for our butterfly thing journal. I'm trying to see where to stick things. I hope you all were able to see the uh, the angel well. Anyways, um, I put my camera in a little bit different position, so I'm having to figure things out. I like this one because it's made up of a lot of different butterflies. Butterfly made out of butterflies. So we are going to use this one today. We we'll try to do something with it. And then I got this um, postage like cancellation stamp. So I've really been looking for one of those for a while. Found that. I watched Tim Holtz. So I had to get some alcohol uh, lift ink, try it out. Haven't used it yet, of course. Um, another trip, I got these resin flowers. So we'll have to try those out and see what those are like. I want to try them with the glaze. Just kind of antique them some. This was on sale for $2. Don't know what I'm going to do with it. But hey, it was only $2, right? <laughs> Please tell me I'm not the only one who does that. So then another trip, I got this washi tape, butterflies, so we can use that in our journal. I got this ticket, Tim Holtz ticket book, and um, you know, that'll just be some great ephemera. And then of course, both times when I went, I bought storage boxes um, because I'm addicted to organizing things. Uh, you think I would have a better organized craft room but these are really nice boxes. I have a lot of them. So I bought a couple of more of these. And then I don't know if any of you have seen, um, let me get it because it's in my cart. I've never seen these at Hobby Lobby before, but it was like $11.99 regular price. And then it had, um, I'm really not liking the spot I have my camera kind of off center here. Okay, I just happened to scoot down a little bit. This um, was 40% off because it's in their spring, um, labeled with their spring shop. So most of that's always 40% off, but it's really nice. It has this first level of organizing spots, you know, little compartments. So I have stuff in there, and then in this bottom section, I mean, you could actually take these out when you're using them, or you could buy this and remove these and put them in your cart or on your desk, but um, I really just loved it, and I considered buying another one, but then I didn't know where I would put it, so it was really would be just a waste of money. But I wanted to show y'all this, and I have one of the longer carts that has um, like the side racks you can put ribbons and such as that on, and it actually fits on the shelf of that cart. So if you have one of those carts, you may wanna try this out for organization, even if you don't keep the compartments in the box, you could take them out and use them in your cart and then have a box to store paper and such. So I had to show y'all that. The other things I've got at um, Hobby Lobby, this was when Tim Holtz stuff was 40% off. And I have been eyeballing these for a very long time. Always talked myself out of getting them. So I finally decided to get them. They're the Thinlets um, 
and I really thought these would be nice to use in my journals. So, um, we may use one of these today, but I got this one. And then I also got the one with the flowers. And of course, more butterflies. I, I already have so many butterfly dies, but you know, you can never have enough in my opinion. All right. So I have to remember I have my camera in a different spot today, so I'm gonna have to scoot over a little bit. So let's flip through the journal, and I think I did a page off camera. Yes, I did this one here, and um, it just has a little tuck spot here, which I kind of cut out to match the paper behind it, so it kind of almost hidden in there. And then I just, um, put on, I can't think of the word, like decoupage, some of tea dyed tissue paper, and then cut out some butterflies on there. And this is a pocket. So I kind of reinforced it a little bit because I actually glued on another book page on top of the book page that was on here. And then I actually put this on here because it wasn't very, um, I don't know what the word is. It wasn't, it was really flimsy. And I wanted to make it a little sturdier. So I did do that. It's been a while since I've been crafting. So my glue is a little, I just haven't been in the crafting mood pretty much since I've moved my desk. I don't know, I guess when it was sitting in the middle of the living room, I thought about doing it more, I don't know. But I haven't been crafting quite as much. I have been trying to decorate some, and um, I bought a new um, picture to hang up in my living room, and we uh, I ordered Abigail a new bed. It's a loft-style bed because her bedroom is pretty small, and she shares it with her older sister, so there's her twin bed and a full-size bed in there, so... She doesn't have much space. So we got the loft bed, which has a desk under it, uh, already built in. And then we can put her dresser under there and she'll just have more room. So she's super excited. She found some Pinterest uh, pictures of how she wants to decorate it. So we're going to be decorating her room. So that's some of the stuff I've been up to. And um, Leia is still, She's still doing all right. She's been, she had a really glad, uh, good last week. She was running around and wagging her tail and happy as can be. And then this week she's back to not feeling good. So I guess it's just going to be one of those things that comes and goes is what it's looking like. So I hope y'all are all doing well. I know uh, it's been a while since I've been on here. But we're going to catch up and do some things. So my idea, of course, I probably just, oh, no, there it is. Okay, I was going to say, I probably just moved it. Um, my desk is a disaster. <laughs> hopefully you can't see the whole mess. Like That's why I'm kind of zoomed in in a weird spot on my desk. So hopefully this video turns out all right because I didn't really want to clean up the mess around it. But I want to use uh, this new stamp here. And I wanted to stamp it on this rice paper. I don't know how easy this is to find anymore, but when I used to sell Stampin' Up, um, we used to sell it, and I actually still have some from then. So I'm sure Amazon probably has it because Amazon pretty much has everything. But we're going to use some Distress ink, and I'm actually just going to pick a color that I can see right now because I don't feel like digging. So I see some wild honey. So we're just gonna go with it. And now stamping with Distress Ink is not the greatest idea because it is not a crisp ink. You're not going to get a very crisp image. Um, so, you know, you gotta kinda know what look you want when you're stamping. This probably isn't gonna dry on this cardboard. It looks like it's coated in something. But I don't necessarily want a very crisp image because I kind of have an idea on what I want to do with this. So 
I'm just going to go for it and see what happens. I do, I do that quite often and on camera because I never try anything out before I film. Every once in a while I do, but not very often. So um, you can see I've probably put a little bit more ink on this side than I did that side, but I'm fine with that. We're just going to go with it. Now what I've wanted to do, um, and this is a very porous paper, so it's really, you know, it's going to blob a little bit because of that, but I'm okay with that. Okay, the Distress Sprayer was on my husband's desk, so I had to go get it. We spray, it does a really, really fine mist, and when the cats climb on his chair to try to look at the bird, they get a little spritz. So it's funny because my cat Stitch could care less if you spray him with a big stream of water. He doesn't flinch, but if you spray him with this little bitty mist of water, he freaks out, so. So I'm going to see if we can get a little bit of um, reaction because the stress inks are water reactive. So we should get some blurring of the lines. Hopefully I didn't over wet it and completely blur out the butterfly, which that may be what I've done because this is, like I said, it's very absorbent. But this is what happens when you try something the day you want to do it. You just don't know what's gonna happen. Let's see. All right, well, I was gonna tear it, but since I've reorganized, I don't know where anything is. I don't see my smaller paintbrush. So we're just going to cut around it. And, uh, because I do, we are going to do another step with this, which cutting kind of takes away some of that effect of the rice paper, because if you tear it, you get those pretty little ruffled edges. And we may do another one and do that. So Megan has um, decided that she and I are going to do outdoor skating and she has bought us each a pair of skates and um, thinking about filming our first skating adventure and at least there would be, um, you know, if I end up in the hospital, there will be footage of it. <laughs> I do know how to skate. I used to go skating all the time and I've actually gone skating quite recently, but I have never skated outdoors with um, like regular roller skates. I've only done it on um, roller blades and that was many years ago when I lived in California. So it's been quite a while. So, um, but I think it sounds fun and I'm super excited about it. So we'll see how this adventure goes. All right, this I need to clean. Let me see if I can find my cleaning pad. Another thing I've been thinking about doing is buying a new crafting desk. Thinking about getting a counter height desk when I can stand at instead of sit. So if anybody has one of those and you have any advice um, you know, I stand all day at work and standing is very comfortable and it's good for you. You can move around more and move easily. So, you know, if you're a standing crafter, call me, I mean, not call me, <laughs> comment, comment below and let me know, uh, you know, your opinion on it. Okay. So this was my idea and the idea doesn't look like it's going very well, but you know, that's how things go. You know, sometimes you have an idea and it works out really great. And then sometimes you try something and you're like, yeah, that wasn't worth doing. So it, it may end up being one of those that wasn't worth doing things. 
but at least we tried. So I'm going to get, I'm going to use the um, tattered rose um, embossing glaze. And I have this Versamark pad. You know, you should never be scared to try any technique. And we're just going to lay this down on here. And it doesn't line up perfect, but that's okay. Uh, let me get my tweezers. All right, so that has the embossing ink on it, and the embossing ink stays um, wet longer. Now, hopefully the whole butterfly isn't wet because, you know, I just wet it with water, and I didn't even check to see if it was dry. So this may not work. That's okay. We can try it again. Yeah, I think my whole butterfly might have been wet still. Mm, I'm very disappointed. Okay, that's all right. It's a lesson on what not to do. No, I actually think it might be okay. All right, let's just keep going. We're not going to give up. Because even sometimes, you know, the thing that you think you really messed up ends up being really nice. And you're like, hey, good thing I tried this. So I'm just knocking off some of that extra embossing glaze. Because there was a whole lot of it kind of gooped up on there. This is a really fragile paper. Really flimsy. Let's see if we can get on this wing over here. Okay, that's good enough. So, I will be right back. I'm going to heat that up with the heat gun, and I'll come back and show y'all what it looks like. It did turn out nice. Because this paper is so absorbent, it really showed up nicely, and then the more I heated it, it kind of soaked into the paper. So embossing powder will do that. If you overheat it, it will just absorb into the paper. We probably need something white to put it on. Let's see if y'all can see that. There we go. So I, I do like the look of it though. It has a shine to it. And you can kind of see the butterflies. So it's not a total wash. Um, it's not exactly what I was hoping for, but you know, it was worth trying. So now what I think I'm going to do is use another piece of, let's see, do we want to use another piece of this? What do we want to back it with? This is how I roll. I never know what I'm gonna do. Just let it happen. Um, Hold on, I, I have like the hugest, hugest stack of this. Oops, dropping things on the floor. I have a huge, huge stack of stuff beside me um, that we're just gonna try it all against and see what we like. I have some coffee dyed paper. I kinda like that. Let's keep looking. Um, I have some of the coffee dyed tissue. Let's see. And that doesn't look bad at all. I kind of like it on that. All right, so let's try some of that. What we're going to do I'm just going to tear around it, not necessarily a, um, a shape. I'm just going to give it a little base to sit on that's torn. 
and see what that looks like. So let's, let's see, I got that torn. Let's try it this way. I like it this way a little better. Okay. So because it's such a um, thin thing, I'm going, I think I'm gonna use my collage medium to stick it down. And we're just going to use just a little bit of it. Put that on the back of the rice paper. And this stuff does dry pretty quickly. Because I don't want to go over the front with it because I have that embossing glaze on there. So we just are going to stick it on the tissue. Now the tissue and it are kind of fighting with each other a little bit. I don't know why I love tissue paper so much. I did a whole um, Donald Duck artwork for my mom and I just painted and put layers and layers of tissue on the painting. And truthfully, in the end, you can't tell there's layers and layers of tissue on it. I mean, it adds a little bit of dimension, but it was fun to do, so I don't regret it. It's just... <laughs> The end result wasn't quite what I was expecting. I wanted it to look a little bit more dimensional. I didn't really get that with it. Okay. So that is stuck down. So now we need to decide what we're gonna do to decorate this. I'm gonna go rinse this brush off and I'll be right back because I don't want to forget about it. I have ruined lots of brushes from being in the middle of collaging and then totally forgetting to go wash them. So I didn't want to do that again this time. Um, all right, I'm gonna kind of move some of my mess and we'll check out. So this one is pretty, um, you know, use that wild honey. So we have some gold and yellow going. So I wanna see what paper I have that I think is gonna look nice with that. And we'll go ahead and do our next page in our journal. I may do some stamping again on the background. So I went and got my eyes checked after 12 years and um, I did need to get glasses. I already knew I needed it for reading, but I do have to wear them also um, to see far away. It's not horrible, but it does help. And um, I mean, my sight's not horrible, but it's, things were blurry when they were far away. So I got a pair of glasses when I went to the eye doctor and then I decided to order a second pair online. And we have been waiting. So I got Abigail a pair too, and waiting, and waiting, and waiting some more. And um, our glasses were shipped for whatever reason to Los Angeles. And um, they seem to be lost in the mail. So we waited and finally gave up. So we put in a claim with the insurance company for the, the uh, company that we bought them from and we're supposed to be getting a replacement they're supposed to replace them so i'm really happy about that because um i had to get bifocals and the eye doctor and i don't know if he just was gonna make more money somehow on this. I don't know the whole situation. All I know is I got the line bifocals and they are horrible. Like I cannot even, I hate them. I, they make me sick. I can only wear them a couple of hours a day. So if you have to get bifocals, do not get the ones with lines. He told me not to get the progressive ones because 
it would make, I get motion sickness real easy and it would make me sick. But it's just been horrible with these glasses. I'm experiencing the motion sickness anyway. So I went ahead and ordered a pair of the progressive ones. So hopefully it, it will be better and I won't be experiencing um, the motion sickness anymore because <laughs> it's really been, it's been bad, really bad. And I do not wish it on anyone. So if you need bifocals, I recommend that you get the ones that do not have the line. I wish someone would have told me that. Okay, I should have talked to my mom because my mom had both, I think. And yeah, she was like, yeah, I don't know why you did that. So anyway, all right. We are going to go ahead and punch. And thank you to my, um, I don't know if they're a subscriber or not, but they are the ones who told me about using the uh, other piece of paper. And it's been great. I wish I had done that a long time ago. But I really like this scrap that we use. So we're gonna put this along the top because I like that a lot. And then I think I'm going to come in with some of this paper. I'm really focusing this book on using um, the scrapbook paper. And you may not be a scrapbook paper crafter. You may like digitals. Um, you can do of course, if you had digitals, you could be doing this with digitals. It, you know, use what you have. That's, <laughs> that needs to be my mantra. Uh, all too often though, I go shopping. So I, I, can't, I can't do the use what you have <laughs> and act like that's what I do all the time because it's not. I want the new stuff. As y'all could tell from my Hobby Lobby haul. All right. This doesn't have to line up perfectly. I'm not worried about, I like these little frayed edges. Um, you know, I was watching Tim Holtz the other day and he used that little brush, you know, one of the little blending brushes that has the little cap on it. And I know I own one. I'll be right back. I'm gonna look for it. Okay, I found it. Now, I don't know what I used it with last time. I am just going to spray a little bit of water on it and clean it. Because he did say don't use it in the pigment ink and then use it on your dye inks. So, just clean it a little bit. But he was saying, you know, it's good to do a light touch and you know, when I've been doing like the inside of these books, it's hard to do with the um, brush. So that's why I was like, I was watching him and I was like, oh, that's a good idea. So I always tell my husband, I don't know why I'm watching Tim Holtz because every time I watch Tim Holtz, then I wanna buy stuff because he his demonstrations are fabulous and he's got so much information and he gives you information that you were like, you learn so much about the products that before you were like, oh, I don't know how to use that and I don't know what I would do with it so I don't need it. And then you watch one of his demos and he does something super cool with this product that you don't own and you didn't know how to use and now you've been educated and now you need it. So um, that's the life I live. <laughs> and I'm totally not ashamed by that. But yeah, if I watch a Tim Holtz um demo then I, I totally need to buy all the things and um yeah he did one on distress crayons the other day and i did own distress crayons already so i did not go purchase those but i do have them out to try to use them because you know i want to try what he did but i haven't done it yet that vintage photo i used was just a little bit too um light i wanted things a little darker and i do think this is going to be my new tool for um doing distressing on the inside of the book binding because it works fabulous. I like it a lot. Okay, 
So, um, let's see. I think I'm going to do some layering here. I do want this to go to the bottom edge. So let me see, we can go ahead and um, I think I'm going to tear it because I, it's been crinkled so much. I think if I try to use my cutter, it's not gonna work right. I'm just lining up where I already did that punch on it. And I don't care if it goes a little over the edge. I'm fine with that. Now I think I'm going to tear it here because I wanna do some layers with the other uh, paper I have out over here. And I may end up tearing it more. We'll have to see. All right. I really should clean off my desk before I do a video. I'm sorry for anybody who is just thinks that my mess is, you know, if my mess is driving you crazy, I, I apologize. All right. So I want to take this all the way to this edge and we're going to layer over it. I think I really like that idea. So let's get the pencil and we'll mark the edge and we're only going to go in about that that's not our piece <laughs> that's not our piece there's our piece okay so we're only we'll go about this far over here we're gonna we're gonna estimate and if i'm wrong then you know we can always cut it another piece it's fine we'll use the scrap for something else I hope to film a couple of videos today. I'll probably edit this one and go ahead and post it and then try to film at least one more video. The weather's supposed to get nasty later, so um, I'm not sure what time. But I do want to film... I have an idea. I just have to, I am going to do some planning for it. Um, I have this book that I used when I was a, a kid to do crafting projects and I found it and I just really got this cute, this idea to do some videos with it. So that's what I want to try to do. All right. So we are just, let me just hold this. That other page keeps sticking to this page. Um, I'm just gonna punch this. I probably should glue it first, but you know, this works too. I've used these, these are for sewing, but I often use them in my craft room. I do so also, um, not as often as I would like to though. Mm, probably a better way to do this, but you know, it'll get done. Okay. Definitely was a better way to do that. I didn't want to put the glue on at first because I always put glue where I need to punch and then I get glue all over my punch and I didn't want to do that. So I did it the hard way. You do you. You do it the easy way. I tend to do things the hard way. So welcome to my world. I'm glad the weather's gonna be warming up soon because I probably need to order more of this glue and where I order it from, they will not ship it if anywhere along the way is below freezing. So I'm glad everywhere's starting to warm up. I mean, they're just in Alabama, so it's not like it has to go far.
All right, so I like how this yellow flower is in the corner because it kind of went with the yellow of the butterfly that I is probably lost somewhere on my desk. Oh, there it is. All right, so I'm just going to stick this down now. Let's ink up this edge a little bit with some um, walnut stain. Wants to have that torn edge stand out a little bit more. That's why I always, a lot of people don't tear their paper where the white edge shows. They tear it the opposite direction because if you tear like towards you, it does one way. And if you tear away from you, I think if you tear towards you, you get the white edge. If you tear away from you, you don't get the white edge. But I like to get the white edge because then when I ink it, um, if I'm going to ink it, it sh just shows the ink better because the edge is white. So that's kind of um, what I do. And just to have just a little more contrast. All right, this did not punch all the way, so we're just gonna kind of tear that a little bit. Now, since this paper is really flimsy because I crumpled it so much, I I'm going to try to glue it down in stages. I also want to line this up. There we go. And now I'll just kind of add some glue and go down that way. Because a lot of times if you have something that you're taking a while to line up, you put such a thin bead of glue on there, it starts to dry. And, um, then you have to go back and add glue. So we're gonna try this away and see how it works. Abigail's been doing some painting in the afternoons while I'm at work, cause I've been, I closed these last two days and um, come home and she shows me her paintings. So she's, she's doing a good job. She gets frustrated cause of course, you know, she wants it to be perfect. And I try to tell her you have to practice and, you know, which, I mean, painting, especially with acrylic paint, is very forgiving. You can add more layers or you can come back and um, just paint over the whole canvas and start over again, which we have, you know, canvases we've done that on. But she's having a good time and I'm glad she's doing something besides hanging out on her computer. Okay. So I think I'm going to stick this down right here. And I am just going to put glue on this behind the butterfly. I'm not gonna put it behind the tissue, just the tissue. So I don't want that glue to seep through, which I probably put too much glue on that and it'll probably seep through anyway. We just won't press it really hard. So it kind of needs something down here. Oops, I forgot our thing at the top. Where did I put that? Yeah, we'll put this right here along the top. I don't know if I like that now. We might do that on another page. Never mind. I don't like that. <laughs> we'll put this. I'll do like this. Let's see. We'll put this along the bottom edge. I hope y'all can see this. I'm probably totally not in frame. Um, we'll end it with my favorite number, 13. And go across here with that. And this was just the little branding strip. I like how when companies do that, they put a design on the back of the branding strip. And then I have some words somewhere. See, this is what happens when you reorganize and you don't know where anything is. Let's see. Um, oh, I like this. Darling, you are a work of art. We're going to use that one. And we are going to distress it. Make it dark. 
got that walnut stain. I used to be scared of walnut stain. Now I like it better than vintage photo. All right. So let's see. Where do I want this? I don't want any. It's so linear. Hmm. See, now I wish I hadn't put this on here. I need to break this up with something. That's okay. I got an idea. We're going to stick this here. Let's, well, I forgot. I always put glue on the back of my stickers because to me, they, you know, unless you have a really super flat piece of paper that no one's ever going to touch, it's not going to stay stuck. And that may be crooked. You know what? Life is crooked. Who cares? Just go on. All right. So since this is this is very linear over here, I want to break it up. So um, I think I'm going to do some flowers over there. And of course, I have hidden the scissors. Oh goodness. Okay. <laughs> Ooh, 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 I have an idea. I have an idea. Yes. No. Don't want to do that idea. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, this is the idea. I'm going to take this scrap I had cut off, and I'm going to try to use one of these thinlets and put it over here in the corner. So we're going to see how that works. Okay, so that took a while. I went ahead and die cut it and then poked all these little pieces of paper out. And that took a little while. I do like the look of it. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to... I want to cover up that whole ruler. So I'm, let me see. I may just cut. I don't care how straight it is. But I'll, I'll cut around this edge. Hmm. Now I don't like it at all. <laughs> I don't like it. Why did I do that? Okay, maybe we can save this for something else because I really don't know if I like it. Hmm. Nope, I don't like that. We're, we're not going to use that. All right, back to the drawing board. I do like the idea of using this paper. I just don't like what that turned out to look like. So let me see if we do something different. I'm sorry guys, this is how indecisive I get sometimes and it really drives me batty. Um, this is why you should not overthink things and just do it but you know easier said than done for sure so we will tear this we'll tear this and like that. All right, let's try that one. Okay. I do like that better. Let's do it this way. I think I like that. Go with it before I change my mind. All right, I do like that. Yes, 
All right, see, sometimes you just gotta try multiple things to find out if you like it. And you know, I don't love it, but I may come back and love it tomorrow. So I'm not going to get, be upset about it. But anyway, this video has gone on long enough. Sorry we didn't do more. I'm just a little, you know, out of it. So I didn't do as well as I usually do with time. So thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to my channel. I love all my subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing. And I hope y'all all have a great day. Thanks a lot. Bye. Hi guys, I just wanted to pop in real quick to show y'all that I had that one piece of um, the part I tore off of here and I ended up putting up there. I like it balanced it out a little bit better. So anyway, thanks. Bye. See y'all later.